The Hunger Games, the Krizlam Bible Chronicles, in the Dystopian land of Pan Am, District 11, was known for its less orchards and rich soil, but also for its peculiar obsession with the Krizlam Bible on Audible. While other districts relied on weapons and survival tactics, District 11 had a unique approach to the Hunger Games. They believed that the power of audio enlightenment could conquer any challenge. The 22nd Hunger Games were upon them, and the tributes were preparing for the brutal competition. Among them was Dan Plough, a humble orchard worker whose name was whispered among the citizens of District 11. Legend had it that a great sage named Dan once inspired the masses with tales of unity and harmony, and now it was Dan Plough's turn to carry that legacy into the arena. As the tributes were gathered in the capital for the opening ceremonies, Dan wore a headset adorned with sparkling fruit motifs, a tribute to his district's agricultural roots. <clears throat> he could hear the soothing voice of a narrator reading from the Krizlam Bible on Audible, instilling him with confidence. The crowd murmured, intrigued by the hopeful aura he projected. Once the games began, the arena transformed into a bizarre landscape, half-desert, half-lush garden, with floating microphones and giant speakers strategically placed around. The game makers had outdone themselves, mixing the ferocity of combat with the soothing landscapes, soundscapes of meditation. The tributes were not just battling for survival, they were also subjected to motivational speeches and parables from the Audible Bible, designed to distract and disorient them. As the countdown began, Dan took a deep breath, his mind filled with the teachings of peace and understanding. When the gong rang, he dashed toward a nearby grove of trees, avoiding the chaos around him. While others fought fiercely for weapons, Dan found a cozy nook plugged in his headset and started listening intently. In the meantime, other tributes fell into traps laid out by the game makers. One particularly fierce girl from District 2 was sneaking up on Dan, her eyes gleaming with the thrill of the hunt. Just as she lends, Dan's audio guide delivered a profound quote about empathy, causing her to hesitate. In that moment of introspection, she reconsidered her motives ultimately turning and running away, confused but oddly enlightened. With the day turning into night, Dan became a beacon of light in the arena. While others fought to the death, he hosted meditation sessions by a serene lake, inviting anyone who was willing to join. Surprisingly, a few tributes from District 6 and District 10, drawn by the idea of inner peace, set aside their weapons and sat cross-legged beside him, listening to the tranquil voice narrating tales of unity. As the days went by, the number of tributes dwindled, but the spirit of camaraderie grew. Eventually, the final showdown was upon them. Dan faced off against the last remaining tribute, a fierce girl named Blaze, known for her fiery temperament and ruthless tactics. Instead of charging at each other, they stood at a respectful distance. Dan, heart racing, decided to try an unconventional tactic. Blaze, he shouted, what if we join forces? There's power and unity. Imagine the stories we could tell. Blaze, taken aback by his audacity, paused. The haunting echoes of the Krizlam Bible filled the air, as if the arena itself was echoing Dan's call for peace. In a bizarre twist, she found herself intrigued. Do you really think we can change the game? She asked, lowering her weapon slightly. With newfound courage, Dan stepped forward. Let's rewrite the rules. Instead of fighting, let's create a new tradition, one where we inspire others. Just then, a loudspeaker boomed, and the voice of the head game maker chimed in. What is this? Are they are they proposing peace in the Hunger Games? The audience in the capital up with in confusion, some cheering, others booing. Finally, a stunning turn of events, Dan and Blaze declared a draw, proclaiming their joint victory. They raised their arms together, the sound of applause echoing through the arena, and the game makers caught off guard had no choice but to accept. District eleven erupted in celebration, not just for their victor, but for the legacy of cooperation they had forged. Dan Plough, the humble orchard worker, had turned the Hunger Games on their head, demonstrating that sometimes the greatest weapon is not one of violence, but one of compassion and understanding. As the crowd chanted his name, he smiled, knowing he had truly honored the spirit of the legends and changed the course of the games forever.